Today on Design, Build, and Fix, we're going to show you how to install the tile backsplash on the beautiful granite countertop that we just installed. Now, if you didn't see the series of the granite fabrication and the installation, I'll put the link for that at the end of this video. And remember, if you like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and also the notification bell. All right, so let's show you how we install this beautiful tile backsplash. So we're going to start the layout of the tile backsplash. It actually starts over there and it's going to follow all the way over to this side. Relatively simple. Uh, we are going to have some that goes a little bit up the window. That fully hasn't been decided yet, but uh, we don't have to know that for today's layout stuff. Um, so a couple things you need to know. The first thing is, are you using bullnose or are you going to use Sluter Edge? Now bullnose tile is nothing more than tile. This is regular tile, but bullnose tile is nothing more that has one side that's rounded. And if that's rounded, then it would actually fall on this end here it would stand up and that would be rounded easing it back into the wall they have chosen here not to use bull uh, bullnose tile they've decided to use sluter now sluter is nothing more than an edging for tile uh, it's aluminum and it comes in different colors um, usually comes in about eight foot strips that's what's left after i cut these two pieces out one of the things that you have to do before you can do layout is know where each thing's going to end. So it's going to end over here. And I also drew a line over there. We'll show you here in a second. And I pre-cut my sluter. Now what happens is the sluter just lines up like this. Right there on the wall. It gets masticed in. And then tile just butts up to it. Same thing happens over on this side. All right, so I've already drawn my line. And we have our sluter piece already cut. That's going to get masticed in just like that. Now, how I got these lines on here? Relatively easy. I just took a large framing square, set it on the counter like this, lined it up on the top here, let it set, and basically just drew a line on the inside here because the tile in this application is going to end right at this edge as it goes down. Now when it gets into this corner here, the tile is going to end here, so you're going to have a little bit of a round over at that point, but that's exactly what we wanted. Now the tile that we, they've chosen is a marble tile. Here it is here. It's three by six, and it's all straightforward. Uh, there's no bull nose, there's no accent tiles, it's just straightforward laying tile. So when you're laying out tile, whether it's for a shower, a tile backsplash, floor, doesn't really matter. The process is pretty much the same. You're going to measure the distance. I measured from the corner all the way over here to my line. I cut that number in half, and you can see I put it here on the wall. I always draw a line and put a C on it. That means center. Now, the process is the same. You have two options, either A, the tile in the center is split in half completely or it's pushed completely to one side. Now the reason you do this is because you want to know what's going to happen when you get all the way down to here. What you don't want is to have a tile that's an inch long here and then on this end in this corner you don't want to have a tile that's five inches long. You want this tile here to be exactly the same as that tile there. So that happens either by getting it in the center or it starts by pushing it out here. Now they may be the same size, it may um, end up being an inch here and an inch down there, but they should be the same. And you do this for every wall. So I've done it, I've, I've done it for this wall, I did it for this wall, you can see I got the center there, starts in this corner and goes over to that line that I have drawn right there, if you can see it, yep. And same process. Now what's gonna happen here is that when this tile 
comes all the way into that corner. What you're going to want to do is make sure that you have a partial tile here and a partial tile here. They could be the same distance. They might be a little bit different, but they're both going to be partials because when you get to this one, the one that's above it, that's going to be a full and that's going to be a full on the wall. So you want those to look like it, the tile continues all the way around. So by the time you get a three inch tile here, you may have a two inch tile here, which is going to look very similar to a full tile as it wraps around the corner. What I'm going to do now is put physically put tiles there with spacers uh, so you don't have to do any math and make sure that it works out and find out which one's going to work, whether it's a full or a half. All right, so after doing the full layout with all the tiles that I've placed there, could have done the math, but I like to lay it out just to be perfectly sure exactly which is going to work out. We are using eighth inch spacers um, for this. That's about appropriate for the small tile. And I decided to start out with putting a full tile to the right and the left of center. And lucky us, a full tile ends here with the appropriate amount of end with our sluter. It's right on our line. So this side actually works out well. So when we do this wall, we're actually gonna start to the right and left of center with full tiles. And I, when I did this side, I didn't have to do this side, but I just wanted to make sure that it was right. So I filled it all the way in, all the way down to the corner. And you can see that a full tile fits there. So then I came over to this side and when I started out, I positioned a full tile here put my spacer here, then position this tile. And the way this worked out, as you can see from the corner, is that we have a full tile here and then we have about three quarters of a tile that's there. If we were to split this and make a, a full tile split this and be in the center, it's gonna add a half onto that, which is gonna leave us about that much space here we're a small piece. So we're actually gonna be better off doing a full tile here and running it down so we have three quarters of a tile here. And that means on this side, we should have three quarters of a tile here. Uh, and that's gonna work out just fine. All right, so one thing that I forgot to account for, which I caught and I adjusted for, is that those tiles there are gonna go in first and these are gonna go in second. So therefore, the wall length doesn't start at the corner. It starts out 3 8 of an inch because the tiles are 3 8 thick. So what I did is I moved my center line over to the left about 3 8 of an inch and redrew a new center line. And I repositioned my tiles. And what I find is that the tile that's going to be in the corner is going to be 4 and 3 16 and the tile is going to be here is four and three sixteenths also. And so that means we only have about that much waste left over on each one. Over here by the window, we have a apron piece that's going up here. So I'll cut that and get that up. And some trim molding that's going to go around the window. And it's also been decided that the tile is going to stop at the window height here. So I got to cut a piece of sluter for this side and for that side. And so then once that's set, <clears throat> we're going to want to put down uh, a piece of paper that covers the whole countertop because we don't want the granite to get mastic or thin set on it and grout and stuff like that. So uh, that'll happen first thing tomorrow, get that paper down. But the rest of today is going to get the rest of the layout, get the trimmer on the window. And uh, I think first thing tomorrow morning, we'll be laying some tiles. Okay, so the tools are gonna be required for you to successfully cut a tile, whether it's a, a marble tile, porcelain tile, ceramic tile. Uh, I would highly recommend that you use a, a water saw. Uh, as you can see in here, there's water that's gonna be down in there. And it's a water saw. Uh, you can do some of the stuff, porcelain tile and things like that, with a one that's it's scored and you push it down and breaks it in half. Uh, not a big fan, but I prefer a water saw. It's got a, uh, it's like a table saw. It's got a fence, uh, diamond tip blade, 
and water in it. You're also going to need some nippers. These are going to help you cut around your outlet boxes. Of course, a tape measure so you can measure some stuff. You're going to want to have some towels handy because when it's, once the uh, tile comes off of the saw, it's going to be wet. You're going to want to dry it. And most importantly, ear protection because it's going to be loud. So here's how you're going to operate your wet saw. It's just like a table saw. It has a fence. It's got a guard. You're going to want to make sure you keep that guard down because water is going to shoot out at you. Um, it has numbers on here. So here's the techniques that I find that's going to work the best. Once you've marked your tile where you want it to be cut, it's going to be marked there. It's at three inches. I almost, I almost always go and set it by what it says here at three inches, but then I take my tape measure and make sure that the left side of the blade says that it's three inches to the fence. Don't, make, don't put it so that the right side of the blade is at three inches because it's going to be less than three inches by the thickness of your saw blade. So you want to make sure that from the fence to the left side of the blade is set to three inches which it is, and we're all set and ready to go. Now, one of the things that you're going to find that as you push this through like this, once it gets to this side, it has a tendency to chip the rest of that out as opposed to cut it. So here's what I normally do. I normally flip it over, I make a score cut in it, and then I flip it back over and do my final cut. Now keep in mind, this isn't a race to the finish. It's to get it to be as straight as possible and so you're just going to keep pushing it through let the saw do the work don't push it through too fast and it should be fine so here's what it really looks like and turn this on notice that there's water shooting out of here flip it over score cut which makes it nice and straight then we'll push it through this side turn it off let the blade come to a stop Go ahead and pull it out and as you can see we have a relative it, it's definitely a straight cut line we have a little chipping on it but that's going to be normal because it's stone but on this end nice and no chip out here and no chip out here so the last thing you need to know is when you're pushing this through you've already done your score cut on this side because you flipped it over then once you push it through once you get to the part where it's actually going to finish the cut you want to go relatively slow because if you go too fast it's going to have a tendency to chip that top part out all right so once that's done take your towel dry off your stone whether it's a porcelain tile ceramic towel marble granite stone whatever it is dry it off and now this thing is ready to be put in all right the supplies you're going to need in order to do your tile backsplash either a thin set or a mastic, a cup of water, of course you're going to need your tile, some spacers, depending upon the size that you're going to need, either eighth inch, three sixteenths, a measuring tape to measure with, a wet sponge, a dry towel, and multiple different notch trowels, and we'll show you why you need multiple sizes here before we get started. Last but not least, some way of mixing up your thin set and a bucket to put it in. So the question is, do you use a thin set or a mastic? If I'm putting something down on a floor, I'm always using a thin set. If it's in the shower, a thin set. If I'm doing a tile backsplash, you can get away with an adhesive, uh, a mastic. Uh, however, it depends on the tile. For instance, this is a marble tile, and so you probably don't want to use a mastic adhesive because uh, what's going to happen is these are definitely heavier, three-eighths of an inch thick. Uh, it'll probably work, but it won't be the best. It's going to take a lot longer for the uh, adhesive or the mastic to actually adhere and dry. 
And what's going to happen, you're going to have tiles that kind of slip down a little bit or move before it dries. So probably not your best bet. So on this job, we're actually going to use a thin set as opposed to the mastic. If you're using a ceramic tile or a porcelain tile, mastic's going to be fine. Now the other question is, can you put it right over uh, painted drywall or just bare drywall? And the answer is, if it's in the tile backsplash area, you can go right over the just bare drywall and right over the paint. All right, so I have mixed up the thin set in my bucket. It should be mixed up to about a peanut butter consistency, which it is. We're ready to put these tiles up. But before you can put it up, what size notch trowel are we going to actually going to need? Now I have multiple sizes here. Now, don't be cheap. Go buy a few different sizes. You're gonna save seven, eight hundred dollars in the labor on a tile job. You can easily afford four ten dollar notch trowels and whatever ones you don't use you can always take them back so we have a 3 16 by 5 30 second uh, v-notch we have the next v-notch up after that quarter by quarter trowel and then a quarter by three eighths probably not going to be using the quarter by three eighths that's going to be more for larger tiles and stuff that goes on the floor quarter by quarter uh, i'm guessing probably not I'm guessing this one might be the one that we want to use. Um, but one of the things you have to understand about your tile is, are there grooves in the back of your tile? Now this is a stone tile, it's a marble tile, so therefore it's pretty flat. So the flatter the tile actually is, usually the smaller notch you're going to need. Because if you have voids on the back of your tile that needs to be filled, you have to have thin set that will fill that. So sometimes back buttering it, will help fill those voids. So you take thin set, take the flat edge of your trowel and just wipe it on and it fills in the the voids. And then you would put the mastic on the or the thin set on the wall and go from there. But this towel here has absolutely it's perfectly flat. So we don't have to back butter it to fill those voids and we're just going to pick this trowel here to see what it looks like. Actually, we'll pick the smallest one. So you're going to take your um, your trowel, put it on the wall, and then when you do this, you don't want to go this way. You want to go up and down with it. Alright, so that goes up and down. And the reason you want it to go up and down is because when you put your tile on here like this, if it goes this way, the tile will actually, or the, the mastic has nothing underneath it to support it, so it allows the tile to slide down. If you have it vertically positioned, like we have here, the mastic underneath this mastic will help prevent that mastic from sliding down and it will stay stuck. So we're going to put the tile on the wall, and when you push it in, you're going to squeeze it, push it back and forth, because our goal is to get those ridges to collapse. Once you have it up there, we're going to take this off to see what kind of coverage we get. Comes up pretty hard. And if you take a look at our coverage, here's the goal for our coverage. In areas where it's dry, uh, you can get 80% coverage. In areas where it's wet, you have to have 95% coverage on the back of your tile. This is a dry area, so we have to have 80%. Now, if you look here, we have nothing, 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 nothing. And realistically, that's not going to work. So our smallest notch trowel is not going to work. All right, so the first small notch didn't work, so we're going to move up to the next bigger notch. Uh, can't even read what it is. I've used it before, so it's just literally... If you compare the sizes of the notches, you can see that they're different sizes. This is the next size up. I'm guessing this one will probably going to work. So we're going to put master, uh, thin set on it. Again, we're going to wipe it on the wall in a vertical fashion. Take our tile, push it on it, push it back and forth, left and right, to get those ridges to collapse. Now we're actually going to peel it off. And we're going to take a look at our, our consistency. And as you can see, 
we're at about eh, not quite there yet because we don't have any over here a little here a little here and then in the middle so i'm going to shoot for the quarter by quarter trowel notch so let's try that one See what kind of coverage we get now. Looks like our quarter inch is going to be just about right. We have a little bit that's not over there. That might be because because how I took it off and I slid it off. But for the most part, everything is covered, and we have these ridges. One of the things with the we have random ridges. We don't have. See, I have these lines. If you have these lines that are perfectly straight on the back of your tile. That means that it didn't collapse those ridges and you still have air stuck in there. So that's not a good thing. Looks like we have relatively good coverage, probably in the 90s, which is gonna be more than enough for what we need. So we're gonna opt for the quarter by quarter trowel. You're gonna to wanna to do this every time you put down a tile, uh, start a new tile job to make sure you're using the right uh, notch trowel because the last thing you wanna do is have tiles pop off the wall or have tiles crack. All right, so now it's time to actually put the uh, tile on the wall. We know exactly which size notch trowel we're going to use. And one of the things you're going to want to take a look at is I have paper that has been put down on our granite countertop because the last thing you want to have is all kinds of thin set on here that has to be scraped off. It could scratch it. You, you're always going to want to put something down to protect your countertop while you're doing your tile black splash. So here's a couple things you're going to need. We're going to need spacers. We've chose the uh, eighth inch spacers. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to put spacers on the bottom, like this, because what we want to do is we want to have a gap between the tile and the, the granite. The reason we do that is because this does not get grouted, it actually gets caulked with the same color grout that you're using here. It allows for expansion and contraction, so it has the ability to compress and expand. That's the way you want to go. So now that you have that on there, of course you're going to have thin set behind it. We'll show you that here in a second. You're going to go for the next one. You're going to take your spacers and lay them flat. You're going to keep it up about an eighth. Put your next tile up. And then you're going to take your spacer, put it in there, slide your tile over, and that's going to allow your tile to stay the exact distance it's supposed to be away from the other one. All right? And that's going to continue all the way down. When we get to the end, we're going to have to put that sluter on, and we'll show you how to do that. Now, one of the things that you're going to find is in areas like this, it's going to be very difficult for you to take your notch trowel and put your thin set on this way because it's, there's, a, there's an apron here. On the window so in this situation you're gonna to want to back butter so if you if you have to back butter your tiles only have enough on your trowel that's going to be enough to do uh, the, the tile itself so what you're gonna do is take that and just wipe it on then take it like this run it through like this and your tile is now back buttered All right, so we're at the point now we want to add our sluter piece. Basically, you just take it, put your mastic thin set on the wall, a 
line it up with your line. Push it into place. Make sure you don't get your thin set in the areas it's not supposed to be. Take your sponge, wipe off your thin set from the outside. And your scooter piece is set. You may have to go through the razor knife to scrape off the rest of it, but for the most part that's all set and we can tile right up to it. So one of the things you're going to do is make sure that that is perfectly in line with your upper cabinet. Take some sort of a straight edge, whether it's a, uh, a level. I have a four foot level, but it's too long. Basically put it on here like this. And I can see that I'm a little bit off. I'm gonna slide this over. We're now good to go. Wipe off any thin set that might be on the wall. All right, so now we have our first row all the way across. Now it's time to go to the center piece. And now we have to split it. So what I've done, is oops, I have put a little mark on there that shows center and I have my center mark on the wall. I'm gonna back butter it, line that up, put it right there in center and then keep that process going just like we did on the first row. All right, so a little recap video here. Unfortunately, we're to the point now where we have all of those cuts that have to be made in order to get this thing to be finished up. So we're ready for uh, all these cuts. Now, one of the things, as you can see over here, I was able to do this row here without having that piece in because that piece is actually cut to the, to the outlet. And all I've been doing to find halfway is you can see on here I have a little bit of a mark and that's halfway and then what I do is I come up to the tile put it on the wall if I can show you like this and mark that line up with the halfway point in the grout line and it's gonna get pretty close all right so that's what we're that's where we're at so now we're gonna do cuts we'll show you how to do the Long cuts, we'll show you how to cut around the outlets and around the window apron next. All right, so this tile here is going to go into this electrical box, and we have to cut a little piece off of here and a little piece off of here. And all I did was I put my center mark, I lined that up with my center mark here, and I put a, a spacer there. And once I lined it up, I literally more than just eyeballed it and put a mark here, eyeballed the bottom put a mark there and we're going to take that out to the wet saw so we know that it's got to be cut out like that in order for that to go around the box so we'll show you how to do that all right so we have two cuts on here we're gonna we're gonna take this long cut first and then we're gonna take this little nip uh, i'm not sure which one i actually gonna take the nip first now a lot of times when you have small cuts like that you really don't need the fence especially if I'm only going in this far it's like a quarter of an inch I can eye that same thing on this longer cut I can probably eyeball that so let's go ahead and cut this in here first now you have to be relatively quick with it because the water is going to get on here and erase your pencil marks so you got to be relatively quick with it Now I'm just going to rotate it around and make this cut. And 
And when you're done, there's our cut. It looks pretty square. You'll notice on the back, it cuts in further because it's a curved cut. That's not a problem uh, because it still looks square on the face. All right, so all I did to bridge the gap between the cabinet on this side and here for the stove is I took a level and went from this side to that side as a straight edge, then just grabbed a scrap board and flushed it to the bottom of the level, screwed it into some studs, and that gives me something I can place my tiles on. All right, so one of the things you're going to want to do is to make sure you take your switches and plugs and pull them away from the wall so that you can get your tile to go behind the ears of the outlet and the switch so you can put that in a little bit later. All right, so to cut this one, we have to cut out the bottom part uh, for the top of the plug. I've got it all marked. We did it exactly the same way we did before, but now we have to make a special cut on the saw. Let me show you how to do that. So to make this cut on the saw, we're actually going to cut in up here to the line, up here to the line, and then what we're going to do is make continually vertical cuts up to the line, and then we're going to put it in the saw and go this way across the blade to finish that up. So here's what it looks like. doesn't have to be a perfect cut because you have a face plate that's going to go around it. As long as we're up to the line, we're good. All right, as you can see, after one long day, all the tile has been put up. The spacers are left in until tomorrow. Let the tile completely dry. And as you can see, the paper on the countertop is a good idea, mostly because you have all this thin set that has dropped onto the the countertop and uh, if you didn't have that on there of course you would have all kinds of work to do to clean up your granite same thing here as you can see from the floor you're gonna have drops on the floor so if you have a good floor down you're gonna want to put something over the floor we're actually putting flooring over this so we're just gonna scrape up what's on the floor and uh, go from there so the tile has all been installed it's now time to put the grout on uh, once you've gone through and taken all of your spacers out, uh, make sure you save these because you can reuse them if there's no, if there's no uh, thin set on. You can actually reuse it. It's time to put the grout on. You're going to need a few things. First and foremost, you're going to need your grout. It comes in many different colors, comes in many different styles. The grout that I have chosen, that I have chosen that I want to mix it myself. I do have to seal it afterwards. Uh, I find that it's relatively easier to use than the newer stuff that is pre-sealed and comes pre-mixed. Uh, I find wiping it off is a little more difficult. So I traditionally go back to the, uh, the old school stuff where you mix it yourself and you have to go back and seal it anyways. Uh, so you're gonna need some, some grout. You're gonna need a, a clean bucket, five gallon pail to uh, mix it up in. You're gonna need your uh, mixing tool, so to speak, that's going to mix the grout up. Uh, a drill that's going to be powerful enough to do it, whether it's a half inch uh, drill or just a, a relatively strong cordless drill. I always mix my grout with distilled water because if, if you use water that has any type of hardness to it, uh, it's going to cause your, stain or your, uh, your grout to be a different color. Um, so I always use distilled water to give it the best chance of coming out exactly like it's supposed to. You're going to need a grout trowel that's going to allow you to get it into the, the spaces. You're going to need a bucket of clean, clear water and some sponges to wipe it off after it's all been put on. You're also going to need a caulk gun because the area between the countertop and the first tile gets caulked. It does not get grouted. And so we're going to fill that with a, a, a caulk that's the same color uh, as, the, uh, as the grout. So these are the tools you're going to use. So let's go ahead and show you how to mix this up. 
All right, so I'm gonna take the grout, dump it in. I'm gonna only mix up about three quarters of the bag. This says about one to one and a half, or one to one and a half pints of water. I'm just gonna slowly mix this in to see where we're at. This is all the grout that I have, so I don't wanna to put too much water in it. I'm just gonna mix it up by hand real quick. And we're looking for a peanut butter-ish consistency again, just like our thin set. That looks like a relatively good consistency. And I'm gonna mix it with my drill. So there we go, a little bit of a peanut, peanut buttery consistency. So now the one thing you don't want to do is uh, you don't want to add too much water to make it too runny. That allows the grout to take a longer time to, uh, um, to harden up, gives you a little bit more effervescence, kind of a lightening of the grout color. Um, now that it's all set, I think we've mixed it pretty well. We want to let it set for five minutes. Once it sets for five minutes, it allows the color to evenly disperse throughout the rest of the grout. Once the five minutes is up, we'll do a quick, uh, a quick uh, remix, and then we'll show you how to put it on the wall. So it's been about five minutes since we've uh, mixed the grout. In the time that I was waiting that five minutes, that's a good time to actually go get another five gallon pail of clean water and a sponge because you're only going to want to put the grout on an area that's large enough for you to by the time you're done putting the grout on it should start to haze over a little bit onto the on the tile that's at that point you're going to want to start wiping it off so let's show you how this this actually works so when you put the grout on the tile you're going to wipe it on and you're always going to go 45 degrees always 45 degrees to uh, the tile and you're going to want to wipe off as much of it as you can. Now an area that you're not going to put any grout is the area between the tile and the countertop. That's going to get caught. So we're just going to uh, put it all through here. We're probably going to have enough time to get it all on here and then show you how to wipe it off. You're going to want to push it into the corners the best you can. Now that we got the grout all on the tile, it's starting to haze over a little bit. We're going to take a, a wet, damp sponge. You want to wring as much of the water out of it as possible, and you're going to make one wipe on each side. Go back to your bucket, wring it out until all the excess grout is off the face of the tile.
So now that that's been all wiped off, we're going to let it dry for a few more minutes, let it haze over again, do one more wipe, and then it should be uh, pretty much all set. The process continues all the way around. I'd have to say that I'm probably going to work in about half that size session sections uh, as opposed to that larger section. So here are a couple more techniques for putting grout on the tile. Originally I had stated that you, can, you should always go at a diagonal to it, which is true, but if you have to go straight up and down or straight left and right, that's perfectly fine too. If you have to put a little grout on the end and just mush it into the where you get to a certain uh, specific spot, that's fine also. But one of the things you always want to make sure that you do is when you're doing your final wipe, always go diagonal. What that's going to do is give you the, uh, the best fill of the grout line on the tile because a lot of these tiles are not going to be perfectly flat. And so if you go diagonal to it, it's going to fill it to the best that it can. So keep those things in mind as you're uh, grouting your tile. All right, well, there you have it. Thanks for watching another Design, Build, and Fix video. And remember, if you like the content, make sure you click the subscribe button. All right, we'll see you on the next one.